Hi students, I am Ravya, Head in Department of BCA. Today I am going to discuss about data structures and algorithm. Data structures, it's a very important concept in computer technology. Data structure in the sense we are going to structuring or organizing or uh, processing the data in a proper way. So if you are arranging the data in a proper way, then we can easily access the data. If you are not arranging it properly, it is very difficult to access the data. Usually for a data structuring, we have to consider two things. First, it must be loaded enough in a structure to reflect the actual relationship of the uh, data with the real world object. Secondly, the formation should be simple enough so that anyone can efficiently access the data whenever it is necessary. Usually for a data structure, it is subdivided into two major types, primitive and non-primitive data structures. For a data structure, for the primitive, it, is, it may be an integer, char, or float, or pointers. Usually for all programming language, we are using these data types such as integer, character, float, and pointers. And next one is a non-primitive data type. For the non-primitive data type, array and list are the two subdivisions. For an array, it may be a single dimension or uh, two dimension or multi-dimensional array. And for the list, there are two types of list, linear and non-linear. Then for the linear, stack, queue, and linked list. And for the nonlinear, tree and graph. So the overall, these are the subdivisions mainly covered in data structures. Next, for a common linear data structures, array, stack, queue, and linked list. And for the nonlinear, graph and trees. First, let me see array data structures. Array in the sense, we can have a set of elements of same data type. For example, in C, just we declare a variable int a of 10. Int a of 10 in the sense, there are 10 elements. All the elements are the type of integer that share a common name, a. So we can store up to 10 elements from a of 0 to a of 9. See, for an array, we have to consider three things. Here, it is an array of five elements. We can have five containers. Then for every containers, we can have an address. Usually for an integer data, it occupies two bytes of memory. So here, for this example, it starts with 1000, 1000 to 1004, 6 and 8. So there are uh, from uh, 1 to 5 locations. So the index value is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Then for every container, we are keeping an elements 10, 100, 20, 500, and 600. Then we can have an address. For every array, uh, the index value, and then uh, actual data, and then the address. So without index value, we cannot access the data. Okay. Then for an array, these are the some of the operations usually we are doing it. Uh, inserting an element in an array and deleting element from an array, then we can do the traversal. Traversal in the sense we are going to visit every element at least once and searching an element from an array. So in an array, we can have a sequence of elements. If you want to check the particular element is present in the list or not, that is searching and sorting an element in an array. Sorting in the sense we are arranging an element in ascending and uh, descending order. Uh, then for a searching, we can have a different types of searching, linear search and binary search. And for a sorting, we can have a different types of sorting, bubble sort, quick sort, uh, insertion sort, selection sort, uh, merge sort. So we can have a different, different types of sorting based on the nature of the data. Okay, for an array, one dimensional and two dimensional array, uh, usually for an one dimensional array, we can have a sequence of elements from A of 0 to A of 5. So uh, usually for an array, it start with 0, then it end with n minus 1. For a two-dimensional array, a better example for two-dimensional array is matrix. So if we have, if we want to store 3 cross 3 matrix or 5 cross 5 matrix, then we can have rows and columns now. So for the two-dimensional array, we can have a rows and columns. 
See, so this is a two dimensional array. It starts with 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2. So it is a first row. Then for the second row, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2. Then 2, 0, 2, 1, 2, 2. So we can keep 3 cross 3 matrix using this two dimensional array. You see, already I told no for searching, we can have a different types of searching linear search and binary search. For the search in the sense, we want to check the particular element is present in the list or not. For the linear search, suppose I want to check the 9 is present in the list or not. So if I want to check 9 is present in the list or not, I have to check it with every element present in the list. So totally I have to do 9 comparison for finding that element. So instead of doing the linear search, better we come to binary search. So binary search in the sense always we concentrate the middle element. So already the elements are in ascending order. I'm going to concentrate with the middle element. So the middle element is compared with the searching element. Suppose the searching element is less than the middle element, then we have to concentrate on left hand side of the middle element. If the searching element is greater than the middle element, then we have to concentrate on right hand side of the middle element. So, so likewise, we have to divide the list every time we divide the list into two things and we uh, compare it with the middle element. So if you are having like this, then that is called divide and conquer concept. For the al uh, for data structures and for the algorithm, we can have a different concept. This is one of the concepts that is called divide and conquer. So if you are having a lengthy problem, then instead of uh, solving the entire thing, we divide the problem into a number of sub problem and we focus it to solve it. Finally, we conquer it to get the solution of the final thing. So for the binary search, uh, for finding an element of 9, just we are uh, doing three comparison only. For the, uh, yes. yes. So for, uh, for finding an element of 9, just they are doing three comparison. So for the first attempt, they have compared it with the 5. Then for the second attempt, they have compared it with 7. Then for the third attempt, they have, they have compared 9, then the matches occur, then we can get the result, okay? Then for the uh, array, uh, the, the application of array is we can uh, implement stack using array, okay? So for the, this is a, a real-time example for a stack data structure. Here we can have a stack of coins, stack of plates, and tennis ball, and we can have a stack of books. So if you are arranging the books one by one, then uh, how we are removing the book without disturbing the entire structure. The last one we have uh, placed it, uh, we can take the last one uh, that we have placed it, okay? So for the stack, it follows the concept of LIFO, last in, first out. See, stack is a linear data structure, it follows the concept of last in, first out principle. We can do all the insertion and deletion in a single end, that is called top, okay? So the top is denoted as top pointer. So the top is used to do all insertion and deletion. And another definition of stack, stack can be defined as a container in which insertion and addition can be done from the one end that is known as top of the stack. So this is a diagrammatic representation of stack. So here for a stack, there are two operations. These are highly important, push and pop. Push in the sense we can insert an element into the stack and pop in the sense we are removing an element from the stack. Usually for all data structures, we have to concentrate how we are going to insert an element, how we are going to uh, delete an element, in what sequence we are inserting and deleting. So this is uh, mainly the data structure is for accessibility, how we are going to access the data. So for different scenario, we are going to access the data in a different style. So based on the application, we are using different data structure. For the uh, stack, these are the, some of the operations usually we are doing. Push and pop, push in the sense inserting an element, pop in the sense deleting an element. Then for the push and pop operation, we, for a stack, we can have a limited size, okay? So whenever we are going to uh, do the insertion, we have to check it out whether the stack is full or not. If the stack is full, then furtherly we cannot do the insertion. Then for the pop, we have to check it out whether the stack is empty or not. If the stack is empty, then furtherly we cannot remove an element from the stack. So is empty, is full are the two more operations. 
usually we are doing. Then peak is to uh, return the element in the given position. In a particular position, we want to uh, get the element. Then count in the sense we, we have to count the number of elements in the stack. Suppose we want to change the value in particular position, then we use that function change. And display is to display the uh, display all the elements in the stack. So this is a diagrammatic representation of push operation. Uh, already I told now here we are having only one pointer that is stop that is used to uh, do the insertion and uh, deletion. It follow the concept of LIFO, last in first out. Initially the value of top is minus one. So now the stack is empty. Then I'm going to insert an element one by one. At the time at the time of insertion, just we are incrementing the top value. Actually, the stack is uh, implemented using array. So how to access the next next location in an array with the help of an index value only? We can access the next next location. Here the index value is maintained by the uh, pointer that is top. Okay. So initially the top value equal to minus one. For the first insertion, we increment the top value, top equal to top plus one. Now we can get the first location. Then we insert the first element, stack of top equal to 10. Likewise, we can insert the element one by one. Uh, for every time, we increment the top value. The top is to point the topmost element, 10, 20, 30, then 40. Here, for this example, uh, the size of the array is four. So we have inserted four element. Now it is the top value is 3. Actually, it starts from 0, so that the top value equal to 3. Okay. And then for the pop operation, so here also mainly we have to get the top value. Now, top equal to 3, so it is to point the topmost element. For every deletion, just we decrement the top value to remove the element from the stack. Okay. Finally, we have removed all the element, then the top value equal to minus one, now it is empty. So this is a major operation, we are doing it in uh, stack. So the next one is a queue, uh, this is an another one data structure, uh, mainly we are using it in uh, computer system. So queue is a real time queue, usually we are following it in everyday life, uh, like ticket counter, or any theaters, everything we are following it now. So it follows the concept of FIFO, first in, first out, first come, first serve. Here also we are doing insertion and deletion. So the insertion is called NQ and deletion is called DQ. Okay. So here we are maintaining two pointers, front and rear. So for stack we are, we are using only one pointer now. Here we are using two pointers, front and rear. Front and rear, for every insertion the rear is incremented and for every deletion uh, the front is incremented. Okay. Initially, front and rear are having a same value. Uh, for the first insertion also, front and rear are having a same value that is 0. Then for every insertion, just we increment the rear value. Rear value to catch up the next next uh, free location and we uh, give the data. Then for the deletion, just we uh, increment the front value to remove the element from the queue. Okay. See, so initially we are having a queue that is a empty queue at the time front equal to minus one and rear equal to minus one. For the first insertion front equal to zero, rear equal to zero, we have inserted the first element. Then for every insertion we are incrementing the rear value uh, to reach the final place. So here the size of the queue is five, so we have inserted five element. Then for the uh, DQ. Uh, NQ in the sense insertion, DQ in the sense deletion. For every deletion, we increment the front value to remove the element. Okay. So the next one is a circular queue. Circular queue is highly similar to uh, the previous one is a sequential queue. So the next one is a circular queue. Circular queue uh, we will see in the next session.